Mighty Omega is a great game, but one of the aspects of the game that make it difficult to get started is a lack of guidance in its beginning steps. By the end of this video, I will have hopefully given you a deep understanding of how the game works, how to progress, and what your goals should be moving forward. If there's anything I missed in this video, leave a comment in the comment section below and I can answer it or possibly make a whole other video addressing that. So I'm going to explain all the basic mechanics of Mighty Omega, uh, for, for those of you who are incredibly new and don't have the slightest idea of what's going on. Although if you've been playing the game for a couple hours, you might already know some of these, but it may be worth listening for obscure mechanics you don't really know about. Let me walk you through everything here. Firstly, the most important thing you should have as a beginner is new protection. Do not under any circumstance remove that new protection. It is a luxury of new players that let you train before you are made vulnerable to much stronger players who can and will ruin your progress and rob you of your money. Getting rid of it is an early mistake a lot of players make. Don't get rid of it no matter what anybody says. If you already got rid of it, there's no getting it back and you're playing on hard mode from now on. Now, let me explain the entire upper left part of the screen. Your name represents a few things. For one, you should have your first name as your display name that you chose when you started. In the middle of the first and last are oftentimes titles, but I wouldn't worry about those right now, I'll explain those later. And then there's your last name, which is either the name you put in or a clan name. Clans can be pretty important in Mighty Omega, and usually the rarer they are means better clan. The clan you want though depends on the build you're going for. Clans also give proficiencies which can give you stat boost depending on the clan. Own is pretty universally good, known for having a powerful mode they can go into. A good combo extender slash starter being Raging Glow. Mikazuchi and Kure are both very good for being lean and they have their own exclusive fighting styles and skills. Jigoro is very good if you're going for a fat build, and Reinhold is very good for muscle builds. Everything else is pretty irrelevant, aside from unobtainable clans, but I wouldn't worry about those for now. This orange-green bar is your health bar and represents how much health you have, obviously. If you take damage, you also have this additional bar inside it called red health. Red health regenerates pretty quickly and can even be gained while fighting if you go a while without being hit. Running out of health will make you fall unconscious and make you vulnerable to being killed. Your blue bar is your stamina. This is pretty important as if you run out of stamina, similarly to health you will fall unconscious and someone can easily grip you. Stamina management is a skill all players need to learn eventually and it also makes stamina possibly your most important stat to train. I'll go more in depth on training that in the training and macroing segment of the video. This yellow bar is also very important as that is your hunger. If your hunger gets too low, you begin to lose muscle and fat, which could mean losing important stats you've worked hard to train, so keep your hunger up. Although beware of the red bar inside your hunger bar as that is your calories bar. If that bar gets too high, eating additional food items will increase your fat stat, which may be undesirable on your build. Your trait is essentially a passive ability that can give you an advantage when fighting someone. Generally your trait depends on your own preferences when fighting, but usually you want to go for firm, brave, sadist, or masochist. Usage of other traits are far and few between, but some people do use them. Body fatigue is essentially a status that tells you when to start and stop training. When training, the general consensus for training is that if it makes you sweat, you're gaining stats. And if you're gaining stats, you're gaining body fatigue. This makes body fatigue a helpful tool to know when training is working correctly. However, you'll want to stop training at 65% body fatigue, as training past that will deduct from your stat gain, making training not so worth doing. Getting rid of body fatigue has several methods. The fastest and most efficient way is to go to the hospital, go to the second floor, and rest in a bed until your body fatigue hits zero. You can also stand still without exhausting yourself by fighting or running away, and you know, you'll slowly lose body fatigue that way. And the slowest method of losing body fatigue is to not be on the game at all. You'll passively lose body fatigue, but it may take several hours to go through 65% body fatigue this way. 
You've also got a few menus over on your left that allow you to mute the game's audio, adjust the graphics if you have a lower end system, change your organization, which is essentially your group, a shop where you can buy rerolls for traits, clans, and other cosmetic aspects of your character, and a miscellaneous menu full of other useful functions you may use later on in your gameplay. And that pretty much just covers all of the interface you see in front of you. With the general interface explained, let me get you into the combat mechanics of the game. If you haven't noticed yet, you have a brawl tool in your inventory. If you press tilde, which is this squiggly thing on your keyboard, you just press that to open up your inventory. If you put this tool in your hotbar, it allows you to use the brawl style. You'll be replacing this style soon, but for now, use it to get the hang of basic combat inside this game. Your M4s do a 4 hit combo knocking back on the final hit, and your M2s do a guard break that can shatter enemy guards and stun them for a brief moment. Hold F to block and negate lighter attacks like M1s, but be careful with guard breaks, or you'll be punished for guarding. You can also from a blocking position press M1 to initiate a parry, and if someone guard breaks you during this parry window they'll stun themselves, allowing you to punish them very easily. Using M2 from a blocking position will initiate a counter. If someone hits you with a non guard breaking move during this time it will launch them backwards and deal some chip damage. Be aware that these moves can be a little bit inconsistent and they operate off the same cooldown. I don't personally use them a lot, but people that practice with them can be very good at using them. You can also do the equivalent of a parry by blocking the moment someone hits you with a guard break. This will perform a perfect block and stuns them all the same. Pressing R will begin charging a purple bar called Rhythm. Moving at all once you start charging will stop charging it and it will gradually decay after that. The more your Rhythm gauge is filled, you will receive a stronger temporary stat boost while fighting. This includes your damage your strike speed, and several other characteristics that bolster you while you fight. Do keep in mind as well that hitting someone with attacks fills your rhythm gauge faster, and getting hit will deplete the gauge. It's also a pretty common trend for your trait to be associated with rhythm in some way, shape, or form, so make sure you know how your trait works before fighting so you can get that extra edge while you're fighting somebody. This is only the basic concept of combat and it gets more complicated as you incorporate different fighting styles and additional skills into your moveset to become a stronger fighter overall. One thing I'll say that matters right now is your height. If you're shorter, you run and strike faster but you have less reach than others. When you're really tall, you move a bit slower but you have immense reach. And it may help to use this information to get a style that maximizes these buffs. For instance, if you're smaller, you may want to use a speed style like Boxing, Capoeira, or Raishin. But if you're taller, you may want to use your big range extension for Taekwondo or Muay Thai. It all depends on your preferences. If you want to review the effects of clans, traits, different fighting styles, and skills, I'll post the Mighty Omega Info Discord server in the description of this video. With all that information out of the way, you're finally ready to start your Mighty Omega journey. So let's get started on some important first things to do once you get in game. For one, you should start with a decent chunk of cash. Go to the bank in the main intersection of the city and open up a bank account. Placing money in your bank allows you to use a card to remotely spend it so you won't get robbed when using the cash. Bank accounts are great for later on in the game and it is just having one as a permanent tool that will help you immensely. At this point, figure out what build you're going for, the main difference between builds generally being whether or not you're going to be a lean build or a muscle slash fat build. That main difference typically being a lean user can use their stamina to fight for longer as well as being faster at running and striking enemies, which can mean having certain advantages during fights. Being a muscle slash fat build though means having additional health and damage compared to a lean build but being much slower at running and striking and you have much less stamina to work with. Which may make you prone to mistakes in fights. You also benefit from muscle poise and super armor typically more often than a lean build. And once you figure out which of these builds you want, you'll need to get even more specific and decide which style you want to be your primary style. Do some research on the styles and decide which one you want to go for. 
Different styles require different kinds of training, and I'll go more into detail on that later. Next thing you'll probably want to do is start training, which you'll be able to do for a while, but you have a resource to worry about. Money. Now, there is a most efficient way to make money in the game, so watch carefully. If you go behind the bank, there's a shop called Extra Mart. Use the job board there and only do the restock job. It has the best money for effort ratio. You'll make money fastest doing this specifically. Once you're ready to work on getting your primary style, you'll have to meet the prerequisites of that style. To know what those prerequisites are, you'll have to look it up on the info discord I mentioned earlier. Once you have those prerequisites, you're ready to start training. Follow the next segment of the video closely. Now, I'm going to teach you how to build on top of what you already have. I'll explain how macros work as well as the ones that are available to you and how to train manually as well. We're going to start with early game training and build up into some of the later game things. Uh, you can check your stats by the way by going to the hospital and buying a stat checker tool. This tells you about your current stats which should be relatively low if you're watching this video but don't worry, we'll get those up in no time at all. Probably the first thing you should ever train is your stamina. To officially train stamina, go to the supplement house, the neon glowing shop on the same street as the bridge. Buy a breathing mask here and wear it while jogging to train stamina quickly. You can train stamina even faster by using the roadworks you find in training dojos. Roadwork can also help you train running speed depending on if you jog or run during the exercise. Mainly what you want to do for road work is conserve your stamina between markers and then jog or run, depending on what you're doing, through them when you hit them. It's also been proven that zigzagging while doing this can help increase your gains even more. Once you've hit a reasonable amount of stamina, let's say like 100 to start or less if you're impatient, you're ready to do some light muscle training. Depending on the style you're going for, you may have to train the stack quite a bit but the basics of training are as follows. Go to the gym, get push-ups and squats, and go to your training dojo. It's important to do as many forms of training inside your dojo as possible in order to get style experience. Any form of training in your dojo will give you style the XP, and it is necessary for not only unlocking the style, but for getting skills in the future as well. But worry about unlocking the style for now. When doing squats and push-ups, make sure you're doing the slower variants as those build muscles. Fast push-ups will give you strike power, and fast squats will give you running speed, which isn't what we want right now. If you want to automate this process, you can use an auto-clicker, or if you want to make it even more efficient, use a macro. Macros, by the way, are sanctioned by the developers of the game, so do not worry about getting in trouble for using these. They're basically necessary to play the game. I'll give a quick explanation of macros right here. There are two types of macros in the game currently as of this video. A Vivace macro and a Senya macro. Vivace macros are free and get the job done but they can be susceptible to bugs at times due to faults in coding. Regardless, using this macro will get the job done if that is your only option. And if the current version of the Vivace macro doesn't work, try asking someone for an older version and that may help clear up any issues you have. The Senya macros, however, are paid access, but they're pretty airtight and they don't mess up hardly at all compared to the base macros. Um, Senya macros also have a few nifty additional features like auto-logging from servers so you can macro overnight or while you're generally just inactive, and can also clip when someone jumps you if you're using metal so you can get revenge on whoever interrupted your macro. The actual process of using a Vivace macro once you've got your hands on it involves the process of downloading software called AutoHotKey. Keep in mind this process is pretty easy. Once you have your AutoHotKey ready, you can punch in the associated macro for whatever you're training and you let it do its work. You have to mess with a few things to make the macro work though, like minimizing your Roblox to its smallest resolution putting away your leaderboard, zooming out in game, making sure your hotbar is stocked with food, in tandem with the other tools you need to train. Usually when you need help with whatever macro you're using, you can ask for help in the discords associated with those macros, which I will post in the description alongside autohotkey.com. 
and if you can't stand using macros, you can pretty much set them up on your own by using tiny task. So back to muscle training now that you've got everything automated. You're going to want to hit 30 upper and 30 lower muscle first. Once you've done this, go back to the gym and buy the light vest and limb weights. Wearing a light vest while doing push-ups, once you've hit 30, will change how your push-ups function, making them slower but rewarding you with more stats. Limb weights function the same exact way for squats. Once you went through several training sessions for your muscle to reach the required amount for the style you're going for, you may have to train some additional stats depending on what you're going for, so I'll cover every other stat as well and how to train them. As a reminder, make sure you're doing as much training in your dojo because if you don't have enough style XP at this point, you might have to go out of your way to grind it. If you do need to get more style XP, you can spar your trainer and get some that way. Now let's discuss durability. This is your health stat and it's really important. It's also the only stat that requires a friend to train. The best way to train durability is to have a partner who deals a lot of damage, only hitting you with M1s. Automating this with a macro gives a ton of durability and won't make you a tank in no time at all. Strike power can be trained by doing fast push-ups, but that isn't the best method of training it. The best method is to get your limb weights from earlier, go in front of a training log, and jog in place until you begin to sweat. Once you're sweating, hit the log. You'll know if it's working if your body fatigue goes up while you do this. This training eats through the most food though, so make sure you're well stocked before you turn on a strike power macro. Strike speed can be trained using the strike speed tool on a log. The faster you hit the log when the indicator pops up, the more strike speed you'll get. It can be tricky to get the macros for this to work at first, but once you understand it, it's easy. Go to Cure or Taekwondo preferably and stand between the strike speed tool and the closest training log. Set it up like so. And an important thing to know about strike speed training is it is a very slow stat to train and it eats through quite a bit of cash. So make sure you farmed a ton of cash prior to trying to do this training. I'm going to now explain how muscle, running speed, and stamina are most efficiently trained, but this is where things get a bit tough. You're gonna have to put yourself in danger by carrying your money on your person and going to the gym to use the machines to train. There are safer methods of training these stats, such as push-ups, squats, running, and jogging, but we're not here to be safe. We're here to make fast progress. So let me tell you how this works. Once you've got 30 lower or upper muscle, you can use the muscle machines. They eat through quite a bit of cash, but if you come to the gym with a lot of money and let it sit, you'll get tons of stats. It also helps to use the respective training equipment like a light vest for the chest weights and limb weights for the squat machine. Watch out though, because it is possible for people to ruin your macro and rob you of your cash. When I do gym macros, I ensure nobody tries to jump me, and if they sit in front of my machine and try to rob me, I server hop and resume macroing somewhere else. To use treadmills, you'll need 50 stamina or 50 running speed, and you shouldn't have to use any tra training equipment pretty much ever. And you might have to use a light vest for extremely late game stamina farming at like maybe over 2,000 stamina, but besides that, you're good to just Farming fat is the simplest thing in the world. You just set it up in front of the cafe, buy a donut, eat the donut. This goes through cash pretty fast, so bring a lot and you'll be fat in no time. You can use your card too on this one, so keep yourself safe. With all that out of the way, you should have a simple understanding of Mighty Omega and how to train generally. As for making builds in Mighty Omega, I can recommend some general builds, but if you'd like me to make a dedicated video for making builds, let me know in the comments below, though generally, if you want to be a muscle slash fat build, you're going to want to have a primary style of sumo, get striking palms, shoulder bash, bear hug, floor quake, body slam, and elbow drop, but if you're an own, you can replace the elbow drop with raging blow, and you're good. There's a lot more variation for lean builds, but if you want to be a combo demon that can true combo someone from 100 HP to 0, 
at the expense of running through all your stamina in that combo, maybe you should go for boxing and take jab rush and liver blow so you can do long extended combos. With Muay Thai, you could upgrade your roundhouse to hit several times, reset your combo, and do a ton of damage. And if you want good range, Taekwondo and Capoeira may be a good primary style for you. I've said this a few times, but it applies to this as well. It is all up to your preferences. There's no best style in the game. Research your styles, figure out what works best for you, and get the skills that help you do what you enjoy doing the most. If you'd like me to make another guide on some of the later game aspects of the game like getting flow, becoming a signed fighter, getting into better organizations, let me know in the comments section below. But besides that, I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you later.